So dear students, I'm going to present the summary, what we have already learned. And also I will add some more discussions that we should learn uh, from exchange rate or from the determination of exchange rates. The first, we already know what is exchange rate. So the textual presentation is an exchange rate measures the value of one currency in units of another currency. We have used the example Taka 80 per dollar means we need Taka 80 for having one foreign currency dollar. And this exchange rate is mostly determined on interaction between buyers and sellers or we can reach to an equilibrium to determine exchange rate between two currencies when there is an interaction between buyers and sellers for demand and supply. And that's why an exchange rate at a given point in time represents the price of a currency. And this price of a currency is the ultimate result of the interactions between buyers and sellers based on currencies demand and supply. What factors really influences exchange rate? Yes, when you determine exchange rate, you must keep in your mind that there are some factors influences exchange rate. What are these? The inflation rate. Inflation rate, if we have high inflation in our country. So we need to spend more home currencies to buy one foreign currency if the country has lower inflation rate compared to our country. So inflation, you need to consider. Interest rates also influences exchange rate. How? If you have bank accounts where you will get more interest on dollar than taka, then what you will do, you will try to deposit dollar, you will try to continue dollar account to have more interest rates. And if you keep your money uh, using home currency taka, you will get less interest rate. If you deposit your money using foreign currency account uh, where you will get more interest, that case is obviously you will uh, uh, deposit dollar. So your interest rate also influences exchange rate because the demand of dollar will increase. And that case is you want dollar even spending more taka. Income levels also influences exchange rates. When national income increases, per capita income increases, people want to buy goods and services from all over the world. So imports will grow. And when imports will grow, the demand of foreign currency will also grow. And you need to buy foreign currency spending uh, more uh, home currency. So you see that when income levels increases, that has influence on exchange rate. Government controls also play some, um, some role uh, like countries China, where exchange rate is determined uh, uh, by the government. Government intervention is very high. So the countries where government intervention is high or government influences ex exchange rate, that is also uh, exists in this world. And moreover, some countries uh, where the less government intervention, but for the betterment of the infant industry or to control import and exports, sometimes government control is exist. At that case is uh, exchange rate also influenced by uh, government control, government intervention. Expectation also, uh, also uh, we need to consider. Why? Because if there is an expectation from the analysis that in future, the foreign currency will appreciate or dollar will appreciate then the uh, community, business community who are involved in international trade, they will try to buy more dollars uh, from the expectation that in future, they have to pay more to buy $1. So they will buy more dollars now, and these will also influence exchange rate. And these will 
in direction of various factors uh, you need to consider to at the time of determining exchange rate. Uh, we have already covered direct, indirect, and cross. Uh, we know direct is related to home currency per foreign currency. Indirect is related to foreign currency per home currency, what we have practiced in our earlier session. And then cross is related to foreign currency per foreign currency, uh, obviously considering a third currency uh, that is a home currency or base currency. And you have already solved a problem uh, and, and that's why we are not entering there again. Now, a different way, if you sign a contract with your bank to buy foreign currency uh, for two working days, that means uh, you have signed a contract today and you will get the money uh, from the bank within two working days, then we say the contract is a spot contract. So a currency spot contract conveys obligation to buy or sell currency in two working days at a fixed price. So you see that it's related to two working days. So if you sign a contract on Thursday, so Friday, Saturday is holiday. So it's Thursday and Sunday, two working days. That is a spot contract. Now see other terminologies. What the fixed price on what both parties agree to buy or sell is, you see that this is the fixed price. This fixed price is known, uh, is called a spot exchange rate, a spot exchange rate. And the transaction date is known, the transaction date is known as trade date. And the payment and delivery date is known as settlement date. From this information, we have four different terminologies. One is a spot contract, one is a spot exchange rate, one is trade date, another one is settlement date. Have you seen that? Yes, sir. Settlement date, trade date, spot exchange rate, and a spot contract. Now, what is forward? So since we have information from the spot contract that you need two working days to be spot, now just a little modification there, same information, just there is a presentation, uh, a difference. What it is, you see a currency, uh, uh, a currency forward contract conveys the obligation to buy or sell three or more days. So when it is two, then spot contract, when it is three or more days in the future at a fixed price, that is forward contract. And other terminologies, now fixed price is known as forward exchange rate, forward rate is known as a, a premium or discount. Why premium or discount? Because forward rate will be either same as spot rate or forward rate will be either greater than spot rate. When it is greater than a spot rate, then there is premium. Or forward rate can be lower than a spot rate. Then that is discount. discount. You see? So these way uh, 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 you can recognize spot contract and forward contract, spot exchange rate and forward exchange rate. And the concept that we are using is basically, uh, you know, the concept we are using concept of appreciation and depreciation. When we use the term appreciation and depreciation, always we use these terms for indicating foreign currency, not home currency. So when we say appreciation, it means foreign currency appreciation. When we say depreciation, it means foreign currency depreciation. So if we say dollar appreciate, what does it mean? We need more taka to buy $1.
If we say depreciation, it means we need less amount of taka to buy $1. You can determine appreciation and depreciation using this E0, E1 divided by E1. So E0 means old currency value, E1 means new currency value. So old currency value minus uh, new currency value divided by new currency value, you can calculate depreciation. Or also you can calculate appreciation using same symbol is just E1 minus E0 divided by E0. So this is the reputation, E1 minus E0 divided by E0, you can calculate appreciation. So there is an example, you see that, how can you calculate this appreciation or depreciation? If the dollar value of the dash mark goes from $0.64 to $0.68, so this is new, this is old, then the dash mark has appreciated by what percentage? 6.25 percentage. How can you calculate? New one, 0.68 minus 0.64 divided by 0.64. So you can calculate what percent your foreign currency appreciate. And same way you can calculate what percent your foreign currency depreciate. How can you calculate? Based on the information, you can calculate using E0 minus E1 divided by E1. You will get all these uh, materials uh, with your uh, black box. That case is you can check again uh, and, and to have enough knowledge about it. So one more information that when bank buys, they don't say buying price, they say beat. When banks sells, they don't say sales, they say ask. So beat means banks, banks buying price. When ask means banks selling price. Can you remember that? So bid and ask, and how banks make profit? The difference between ask and bid is bank's profit. That is called a spread. A spread means difference between ask and bid. Remember these terminologies. A spread means the difference between bank's ask price and bid price. Bank ask means selling, bank's bid means their buying price. So from today's content, that's enough.